Hello guys, my name is Alex the Grumpy One and today we're here to do a video on the review and detailed installation on my new car lift. Uh, it's a three and a half ton, two post h base car lift from Automatec Garage Equipment. For those of you who never heard about this company, we have an established company in the UK that supplies car lifts and other workshop equipment for trade and public. As you can see, I myself uh, bought a couple of bits from them, uh, two transmission jacks and the oil drainer with a mechanical pump, which I'm very happy so far with. The main reason I went for this company is due to my friend recommending me them, as he bought a similar lift from them three years ago for his business, and he has been using it on a daily basis and never had a single issue with it so far. So I was looking for a lift that was going to be suitable for my situation. As you can see, I got slightly uneven ground here and concrete thickness in my workshop isn't that deep. It's around five inches. So I gave them a call and the customer service was great. They pointed me into the direction of this two post car lift, which only needs a minimum concrete depth of four inches. So it's perfect for me. Also being a two post, it doesn't take up loads of space in my barn, which means I have even more room for my tools and to walk around the car. I just want to talk to you about some of the features of this lift. So to start with, it's three and a half meters wide, which I think is good because it leaves you a lot of space once you drive the car on there to open the door and get out of it. Uh, it is also around three meters high, so you'll need to make sure you have adequate space above, obviously, to allow not only for the lift itself, but also space for whatever size vehicle you wish to use on it. So guys, this one is a three and a half ton uh, H base lift, like I mentioned earlier, but the company also does many other models, uh, including four post lifts, a single post lift, or even portable ones. So if you have a good look on the website, or oh, give them a call, I'm sure they'll advise you on the best one for what you need. Like I said, I found them very helpful and they gave me a great advice and this why I ended up with this one. So if we move over to the actual post, uh, you can see here the isolation box with the switch, which has got a green up button built into it, which is quite helpful as most of the other lifts I've seen doesn't come with isolation box, you have to buy it apart. Then if you move down, you got the motor itself. Like I said, this is a single phase product. So I've got a single phase motor, which is connected already to all the electrics. And this is the lever to drop the lift down. So if you push it in, that will release the pressure and the arm's gonna start going down. While we're here, I wanna show you the oil tank. So this takes around 10 liters of oil it's a hydraulic oil. I'm going to show you the oil that I've used. I thought 32. It, like I said, it takes 10 liters of it. And while we're here, I want to mention something very helpful, which is the system that this has got for the oil. It's a self bleeding system, so you don't have to worry about bleeding each post at a time. So if you operate the lift up and down around five or six times, that should self bleed the system. Also, I want to mention a, the main reason why this only requires four inches of concrete. So as you can see here, as I'm walking this way, this is a reinforced H base to which you bolt the lifts on. So the, in general, the two post car lifts, they bolt on straight into the concrete. So you won't have any of those, of those fixings here because they'll be going straight into the concrete uh, where you need at least six inches. So due to this reinforced H frame, like I said, you only need four inches of concrete because the frame takes uh, most of the weight on it. And like I said, all of the stuff you see in here comes in a pack apart from the oil, which is easy to find on the internet or buy in any uh, commercial shops. 
so like you can see the two posts obviously installed in the same way uh, you get 12 anchor bolts in this pack and you obviously get all the other fittings and oil cables with it also you get the instructions which is good reference point as you can see here with the model number and code so if you look over here you can see the swing arms I was really impressed with them uh, they extend from what you can see there 665 millimeters to 1250 millimeters which I think is quite impressive for this to be honest and while we're here I want to talk to you about the extension pads so this is the bit that goes into your jacket point so it starts from 1200 millimeters and it goes all the way up to 210 millimeters which I think is quite a good range so as I was saying this arm has been this long it's handy if you do work not only on the cars if you need to get something else up in the air so you can get them here and join both of them and you can work on something smaller than the car so I just want to give you a quick demo on how it works so if you look here obviously if all your electrics are connected and you got oil in it all you have to do is just turn the switch on and press the green button for it to go up so before you obviously go up you have to make sure the car is over the frame and you located your arms and pads on the jacking points on the car which obviously every single car got different jacking points so make sure it's safe so once it's on there press the green button and you're going to start going up what I want to mention to you is uh, just before it touches your seal or the jacking point you need to have a look at the arms and make sure these locking mechanisms as you can see here are fully engaged on purpose I left this one not engaged so I can show you just something quick so if it if it's like that it's not an issue all you just have to do is get your hand on the arm and just move it slightly till it drops in so once you move it obviously double check that your pad is on the safety jacking point we ain't gonna move a lot this is very important because the locks do need to come in before you go all the way out with the car as it will be a massive safety issue if it's not so I'm gonna carry on and go up pushing the green button <laughs> So if you have that click, this is the automatic safety locks engaging. Um, that is completely normal. Uh, you should be hearing only one click, um, but I'll explain that later in the video on how to adjust the clicks. Right, so once you've done what you have to do on the lift, uh, to go down, you have to pull the safety locks out on each side, which is I'm gonna show you now, just to demonstrate it quick. So you pull it all the way out, you're clicking and the same on this side this is very important make sure you pull both of them out because if not one post will drop more than the other and that will cause an issue so once you pull them out all you have to do is press this lever down and it will start going down and you'll see the oil level going up as obviously it's returning the oil from the pistons I know at the moment it's been slightly slow but it's only due to not having a car on the lift as it hasn't got a weight when it got a weight on it it goes a lot quicker I'm gonna show you that in the end of my video once I've driven the car on here to show you how everything's working so once it went all the way down if you look over here the locks that I was talking to you about are disengaged now they went all the way up because they got the spring so now you can freely move the arms away from the car and drive the vehicle out so guys like you can see it's really easy to use and as long as you're careful everything will be fine um, the other thing I want to mention is this has been a great deal because this whole lift um, the whole pack got delivered here uh, for just under £2,000 which I think is great when you look at the quality and in what you get with it as well so I hope this has been helpful for you guys if it has then please subscribe 
and share my video. Um, if you also got any questions, uh, then you can message me or comment below. So if you stay tuned guys, then I'll be taking you through the full installation, detailed installation on this lift from finding obviously where to put your lift because once it's on, you know, you can't move it to installing everything and making the final adjustments. So like I said, there's going to be lots of advice in this next video. Uh, so if you're planning on buying one or you just want to find out what it takes to install one, uh, then it's definitely going to be a great video for you. Uh, one thing I want to mention is you're definitely going to need at least two people to do the installations. Are you going to see it further in the video why? Um, so I definitely recommend watching this video guys because me myself, I was looking for a video like this. I, that definitely would have saved me a ton of time and I hope, hope it will do the same for you. Um, so yeah guys, keep on watching and I'm going to show you everything now. Right, so the first thing was to decide where we're actually gonna go. And this was the perfect place for it because I'm gonna try and have two cars in the workshop. So this will be one on the lift and I left enough space for the other car to come in in there and be able to work on the ground, which was about three and a half meters, which is more than enough. So like I said, just make sure you know what cars you're going to be working on and that you leave enough space at the front. I'm probably going to be able to fit the toolbox here as well. Obviously in last case, if you're taking the engine out or doing some big job, you can always reverse it in and you've got more space on the other side. But yeah, make sure you put it in the right place because it's not going to move easily if you do it wrong. So the reason I bought this one is because I only got six inches of concrete here and this lift requires minimum of four. So I've been recommended this lift. Like you see, you got extra bars here for extra support. It comes with 12 bolts to bolt it in. So that's what I've used to check my concrete. Mark six inches on it, drill the hole until it goes all the way through. Once there's no resistance, obviously you run out of concrete. So I definitely got six. For this one, I'm gonna be drilling five inches holes. Right guys, so so far we fit fitted four anchor bolts, as you can see, on the main frame, which is obviously separated for now. So the main frame is bolted in. This is the guide drill, just to start to make sure it's going to be in the middle. And then we use the 19mm drill and as you can see you knock them in first i'm going to show you the anchor bolts we got they're the ones that come with the kit 12 of them like i said so as you can see that will expand at the bottom you have to knock the pin in so obviously you measure your bolt, you might have a different size bolt, but you measure it to where you want to go, how deep you want it to go. Once it's in, you locate it in, align all the holes, and then give it a good bashing till the whole pin goes in and locks it in in place. Then you'll see that you ain't gonna move anywhere anymore. 
and be careful because once you've done that they ain't gonna go anywhere so you can't really take it out anymore so now at this stage it'd be a good idea to put the posts up so we can align this support make sure the holes are aligned before we're gonna drill them so I'm gonna put them up now and then drill another holes like I said we still got another eight to go right guys so we fitted one of the posts now you obviously have to work out which post goes where I'm gonna have the box and the motor on the right post so this is on now it seems about 300 kilograms each post so it was two of us doing it I had a pallet loader as you can see to move it in place once we moved it in place on its side it was laying down here pretty much and then while it was on the side we lifted up at the top I had a bit of wood laying on it which I'm going to show you next video I'm going to film it how we're doing it and then you can see uh, what you have to be careful with is the wheels that you got there for the cable as you can see they fit in those cutouts there make sure you don't put your post straight on the floor because you'll damage the wheels I can show you on this post as you can see the wheels coming out more so make sure you don't put the whole weight of the lift on the wheels in case you damage them and make sure the cable is on properly when you're doing it so I'm gonna do a video on us fitting this post in there like I said once you've done it I've started some bolts up just to hold it in place because you need to fit it on before you do the other four bolts to the ground to make sure it's all aligned right guys so we've got the second post ready to go up but before going any further, I just want to let you know something that you need to make sure your cables go in first because there's one cable on each post that need to connect with the other post as you can see there there's two wheels that I spoke about earlier and in the beginning only one of them got cable coming out so I had this cable coming out from this one and then I've connected it to this side you can see that's the cable but to get it in there, there's two choices. You either do it the way we done, it was a bit too late, we realized they needs to go in after we bolted the lift in the post. So if you've done that, then you have to unbolt the pulley. There's two bolts holding it in there. With the Allen key. So unbolt them and then the pulley goes up and you can fit the pipe in. Or do it like we're doing on this one fit the pipe in straight away make sure it goes in the right place and comes out at the top because what happens is it comes out at the top goes on the top pulley that you can feed by unscrewing this little plate and then the, the cable will go in there because afterwards you need to go all the way down here and you're going to have two nuts on there to secure it there so you can adjust it as well afterwards so now we're going to try and lift this post up I'm going to try and film it and show you how we're doing it Right guys, just to let you know I'm using a couple of bits of wood Just to make sure it's not sliding or not scratching the paint So I'm going to use them bits of wood and then once it's on the bits of wood It's going to be easier to remove them and locate it in place So as you can see guys, we need at least two people to install this lift as it is very heavy. 
make sure you got everything ready as you can see I'm using those bits of wood to help me secure it in a position and not to damage the pulleys also make sure obviously the cables go in the right place on the pulley once it's located uh, while well, one of you is holding the post start the thread on the bolts you get five bolts so make sure you start the thread on them and do them up slightly so the lift ain't gonna go anywhere like I said please be very careful on this part and make sure you're using and wearing correct PPE Right, so we've got this post up now. It's all bolted in as you can see. What we have to do now is get the arms in. I'm not putting the cover on yet because I want to see how the cable is going to work. So we're going to get the arms in. And to get the arms in, there's a clip that you have to release under here. You're going in them, in them please. Pull the clip apart and that should come up. There you go. Right, so now Tony, if you can hold that please. And I'm going to get the arm in there. Oh. Don't forget to put the clip back on. Oh, the clip is locked. So that's this arm in place. So to unlock the arm, you have to pull this up and then you can move it and drop it down, make sure it's always locked. Right guys, so today I've done a bit more work. I've installed the oil pipes. As you can see they go from there. They supply you the oil pipes. I got one goes in there to connect to that post and the other one goes to the main one when you're installing them you need to make sure that they're going to sit properly and not touch the cables because the cable is going to be running you don't want the cables to be touching the pipe so it rubs it through I've installed the unit itself there's four 12 mils holding it on as you can see and I've also installed the box there, so you take six screws off. And then in the back you got four screws that bolt it on there, on a post. So that's done. Obviously the wiring is doing now. And obviously you need to put the oil in the pump. It said on the manual that it takes about up to 10 liters. So I have to check that, I got 10 liters of oil. Um, I had to take the arms off again to get this up in the air because it's obviously it's not working yet because I still haven't had the electrician coming in to sort the electrics out so I can't power it up yet so I've put the cables in there's two nuts as you can see there still need to adjust them 
but to put the cable in, you have to lift it into a locking position so it's above the, the above the posts there. So I've got it up in the air, and with the arms on it, it's just impossible to lift it by yourself. So I took the arms off and lift it up till it locks. Alright guys, I'm at the final stage now, I had the electrician in, all my LED units are wired in now, I've got the fuse box there as well, as you can see, and also this is my car lift fuse there, like it says in the manual, so everything's sorted now, it's also working now, I had to put 10 litres of oil, and once the electrics were sorted, obviously I had to prepare all the pipe work. So I've done all of that and then I had an electrician coming in and sorting the box out. And all the wiring in this box and that box. If you need help with that wiring, please let me know. I can open the box and send you a picture of how it's set up. But I would definitely recommend having an electrician coming in because you don't want to get this wrong. And burn the motor or anything else. Once I've put the oil in, this is self-bleeding system, so once you put the oil in, you just have to pretty much work the lift up and down, I don't know, about 10 times. Then it will self-bleed itself. Be careful, don't work out too much, because this will get hot. The motor does get hot, because obviously it's not meant to be going up and down, up and down all the time. So I've worked it a few times, the air got out of it, it's working perfectly now. The other issue I had was the adjustment on the cables. Because I'll explain to you in a second. So obviously you got once you put the cables in there with two nuts. Look the two nuts on there. I've used all the thread on there. So I've locked it all the way up. So all the thread is used. So they both the same way in there. Up to the end of the thread, two nuts and locked up. And this is the ones you adjust on that one there. So when you're adjusting this one, if you tie it up, if you do the nut up clockwise, that will be lifting this set up the same way as if you undo that on that side you'll be dropping this side down and if you want to do the other one this is the adjustment for that side so once you've adjusted it all you'll have to put these covers these covers back on so this cover will go you have to unscrew them four screws there and this We'll go behind it, and then you obviously screw the rubber on top of it. I'll do that in a bit, because I just wanted to have them off to show you how you need to adjust. So the adjustment works pretty much. If you start going up, you have to get it to first or second lock. That's one. Two, that's two. If you can hear it, it only clicks one. When it needs adjustment, you hear one going click, then after like a second, the other one's gonna click. And that means you will need the adjustment because they're supposed to click both in the same time. There should be this just single click. If there's two clicks, then obviously you need to adjust. And you'll be able to hear which one's clicking first. So in my case, this one was clicking first, and then that one will click after like a second. So I had to, you obviously check the tension on your cables, as you can see, that's acceptable tension, that's good tension because you don't want them too tight, if you've got them too tight, it'll be forcing your pulleys, and that's not good because you're going to cause wear on the pulleys. Also while we're here, I want to tell you that you need to get a grease, a proper grease for this, and grease up all the points. So. Grease up that point there, both sides, bottom and top. The same on this side, you need to grease it all up. And the same on the inside, on this bit and that bit on the inside. And obviously on this side, you'll have the same thing. You need to grease it all up because you definitely need to have grease in there. This is the grease I've used, Triple QX, multi-purpose EP2 grease. Don't forget to check on all of your couplings if there's any oil leaks.
So as you can see guys, it leaves you quite a bit of space to get out of the car once it's on. Um, especially on this one because the doors are quite long on here. Um, so even if you um, open them too much, you got this wrapper pad to protect uh, from any damages, which I think is great. So guys, once the car is on here, uh, all you have to do now is obviously put the arms on the checking points. Like I said, um, every car got a different checking point. So once you got it on there, double check it. And I've done the other side already. So I'm gonna start going up. Once you start going up, before uh, it starts lifting the vehicle up, make sure that your safety mechanism is in the right place and it's locking the arms from swinging as you can see there i'm gonna go a bit more right as you can see guys the safety locks i can see that the pins are dropped in so if you look in here the safety locks are fully engaged let's just double check it on the other side because if they're not you will have to adjust them slightly so they drop in and lock I can see already that this side is fully engaged as well because they drop down so that is perfect I know that I can keep on going up now You heard all the clicks, which is automatic locks engaging, and you can see how high this goes. Um, my pads are actually on kind of lowest level you can get them. You can obviously put them higher if you want. But as you can see, um, I fit here perfectly, and there's plenty of height now to walk on your car or do whatever you need to do. And like I said, it goes up a uh, meter and 90, which is plenty and the speed of it i'm happy with and like i said you've heard the safety locks engaging uh, if you want you can drop it a little bit at this stage so it drops on the actual mechanical safety locks as you can see now i'm gonna push the lever so that dropped on the actual mechanical safety locks right guys so now i'm going to show you how to go down with the lift so if we get here, we have to pull the manual locks out and the same on this side. Make sure you pull them out and both of them are completely out as if you left one in, it lift's going to start going down unevenly and that will cause an issue. So like I said, double check that you pull both of them out and now we're ready to start going down. One thing I want to mention is when you're going down here you can adjust different speeds. Like you can see now this is the full speed but if you're doing any engine work or etc and if you need to go slightly slower if you push on this lever just with slight force it will go slower as you can see there. So if you need to adjust something or put the bolt in a thread or etc this will be ideal for it. So it's kind of fully controllable on the speed here. So now I'm going to go the quickest way you can. And in a second, we're going to see obviously all the oil coming back from the pistons all the way up.
Right, so as you can see, this is all the way down now. The mechanical lugs release themselves using the springs. So all you have to do now is just pull the arms out of the way. Obviously on both sides. And then you're ready to get your car out. Right guys, thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. I really hope this was helpful. If you need any more information, please comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, please. And I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.